All right, I will welcome everyone to the first Capital Improvement and Planning Committee meeting. Uh, it is Monday, January 30, 2023, and it's 7.30 p.m. All members are present and have been notified by the town clerk that everyone is fully sworn in, so thank you for doing that. I realize um, it was um, another thing to do um, and everyone's busy day, especially given um, this is just a conversion from a standing committee to a, um, sorry, from an ad hoc committee to a standing committee. Because of that, um, I think it's important that we um, organize ourselves. Uh, we need a chair, a vice chair, and a clerk um, for this moving forward. Um, the roles typically on, for those that have been on a standing committee, you typically look at them again at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, so we would do this again on July 1 of 2023 as well, or the meeting closest to that. Um, we may or may not have new members along the way, but that's typically how I've seen most um, standing committees work, especially given we have staggered terms now as well. So with that, I'll see, open the floor, we should elect a chair first. Are you interested in being chair again, Jason? I am happy to continue as long as no one else wants um, this role. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Jason Malinowski as chair of the Capital Improvement and Planning Commission or Committee. I'll Third. second. Okay, motions have made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All right, we need a roll call vote on that. Uh, so I'll start with Hark. Aye. Palmer. Aye. Schoner. Aye. Wheeler. Aye. And Malinowski is going to abstain. So 401 vote. Thank you for your confidence in having me continue. Um, is there anyone that's interested in being the vice chair? As a reminder, Lisa was our prior vice chair and obviously is no longer with us. So we definitely will have someone new to this role. So is there anyone willing to step up for that? Uh, I'll step up for it, but I'm not sure I'm the best person for the job. I think Andrew would make better. But Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff would make a better one. Say, so, yeah, I don't. I was going to say, I always say that. I don't, <laughs> ever since ever since Andrew left, I I I just say his name. Just I, I can't help myself. I don't. Well, know I appreciate. I appreciate. I'm, I'm sorry, Jeff, but I th I think you'd make a better vice than I would, honestly. I think you would be terrific. I don't know. I might. I might say. I might say Andrew again, and then we're all. <laughs> Is there anyone that's interested in doing it for our five month period and then you can both reassess? We can always add this to the agenda I'll, at any point in time. No, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out and see how right. we go. If, if, if we all feel we need a change, I won't be insulted. Uh, everyone good with that? All right, then I'll move that uh, Joe Palmer serve is the vice chair of the CIPC. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Hark? Aye. Palmer? Abstain. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski is aye. Um, now, I know there's going to be a huge debate over this next one. Um, we officially need to have a clerk. Um, I appreciate all of you um, rotating the minutes over the years, and I know that hopefully that will continue. So this person really is just responsible for ensuring that the minutes get in. I have some background noise and for once it's not my kids. Um, so um, I guess um, is there anyone willing to serve as our clerk just to make sure the minutes get to the town clerk appropriately? And there's help along the way as Jeff can assure us. Jason, when are we likely to pick up another member? Has the uh, select board given us any idea of candidates or people that they're going to bring um they're not exactly um all coming forward at this point uh, i did have a conversation with the chair of the select board kathy cook today about that exact topic and making sure that um through her channels obviously all of the select board members but also i think as any of us as we all know um we've been fortunate to to get karen and tony to join us along the way here too um, that came really through discussion in the community. So I think they have some people in mind that they're hoping will 
sign up. I think um, hopefully our meeting um, schedule is attractive that we um, commit to one to two meetings a month and um, try to keep, stick to a tight schedule. So I'm, I'm trying to use that as a as a hook, but uh, long winded answer, Joe, of saying there's no one right now that's in front of them for appointment. Um, All right, so we need to recruit. Yeah. And do we do we have a budget as a standing committee now for minutes? Not this year. Um, however, I think we're in a better position to have that discussion as a standing committee, but um, we don't have one yet. Jeff, would you be offended if I, I just uh, if I'm, I'm happy, happy to do it, but I don't want to get anyone else's way if they want their role. <laughs> Um, Tony or Karen, any objections to that? All right, so I'm gonna nominate Jeff Hark as our clerk. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Thank you, Jeff. Quite welcome. Well, um, hasn't been voted on yet, but. We, we, should, we should just write team. That's where we should appoint, but um, we'll leave it at that. Um, so motion is made second, and I don't see any further discussion, so we should do a roll call. Hark? I'll abstain. Palmer? Aye. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski's aye. Thank you again, Jeff. All right, uh, on to meeting minutes. Um, we need to approve the prior committee's uh, final minutes um, so that um, we can move forward. Uh, the good news is, and Mark can confirm this for me, because the select board has um, disbanded us, this should fully commit, this should fully finalize that committee's work. Um, and just roll right into this one. So we have two sets of minutes in front of us. The first is from the 19th, which was a quick short meeting prior to our select board meeting that was circulated by Tony earlier today. I'll just, um, we'll help you with this, Tony, if we can get the word version. Uh, we just need to add the list of documents at the end. Um, that was my comment. I don't know if anyone has any other items. Um, actually, no, Tony did put it, he was taking minutes at the beginning, so that would cover off who did them. I was going to say that, but then I just scrolled to the top as I was saying that. So are there any comments on those? All right, I'm going to try to do this in one motion. So are there any comments on the 20th meeting minutes, which I believe, Jeff, are from the select board advisory minutes? So and here are the finalized version. Okay. They were approved last week, I believe, or two weeks ago. So these are would be consistent with those two other boards that were in meeting with us. Okay. Are there any comments on those? Jason, the only comment I have is that I was at the 19th meeting, but not the 20th, if you're going to do them together. Okay. Um, you can vote, um, but if you want me to separate them, I'm happy to separate them for uh, purposes of motion. Uh, no. So what... Uh, no, do what's do what's quickest <clears throat> and easiest. Okay. All right, then I'm going to move that we approve the draft minutes that were presented to us for December 19th with the addition of the list of referenced documents, as well as the December 20th, 22 minutes to conform with the advisory and select board minutes. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Hark? Aye. Palmer? Aye. Joner? Aye. Wheeler? Abstain. Malinowski is aye, so it's a 401. Okay. Uh, chair and member updates. Uh, first is the Neary Building Committee. Uh, while the committee has not fully met, um, we did have a meeting with the state um, here and um, recently, and uh, they are expecting that um, this project will be in front of the MSBA board. Um, likely at their April um, meeting. Um, the district has fully completed all asks. Um, there's some finalization around enrollment going on, which will be used for, to help with sizing of potential facilities. So the importance of what that next step is, is that would be where we move into feasibility, which means we'd actually start using the money that was appropriated last year with consultants. So the first thing that we would do is you'd hire an owner's project manager, and you'd hire a designer as well in collaboration with MSBA. And that would really define what we actually are talking about in terms of a project, what grades, is it a renovation? Is it something new? Is it something in between? That's where the Woodward discussion will also 
um, come back full circle that came up multiple times in the meeting. Mark was actually in attendance as well. So um, that has been remarkably quiet, as you know, for the last nine months, um, which was expected. Um, but kudos to Greg Martino and his team for all the work that they did um, behind the scenes as well, just to keep that process moving and keep us in the keep us in the running um, and look forward to having that discussion come April. Um, you will see a posted meeting for that committee at some point when we can talk about enrollment data. Any questions on where that's at? All right, Joe, um, Shopsy subcommittee. Um, the uh, committee is aware that of the urgency of trying to get a report to the select board. Um, the head of the committee is compiling all the information from members and putting together a, a finalized formatted draft that we will go through in short order and hopefully get out sometime in the next couple of meetings. Any questions for Joe? All right, uh, Community Center Exploration Committee update. Um, it has now been formed, um, fully populated, uh, and Mark will tell me when the first meeting is which I don't know when to assume, right? Yes, I will not tell you tonight, um, okay. but it is it is going to be soon. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to get that posted. So okay. I'd like to say before the end of the week, but it may be, it may be into next week, so. So I think the importance for that, um, for capital is, um, it came up again in the discussions with MSBA. So we're going to need to understand where that's going because they want to see the overall community picture as well, especially when you're talking about a school. Um, and, you know, if there's there were to be any school closures, how buildings would be used and what the level of community support is, because um, they want to support the one that has the most community support. Um, they don't necessarily have their own view of which way something should go. They were very clear about that as well. Um, so it's coming. Um, the last is, is just an FYI from me. So right in and around the time that we met on December 19th, um, Karen Galligan, um, I guess it was through you, Brian, technically, submitted um, something related to an aerator for the DPW department um, to be added into this year's capital. Um, it candidly wasn't ready for prime time at that point um, in terms of us being able to take a position. Brian kept it kind of on the radar to make sure we didn't lose track of it, given that other things were moving forward, especially with our presentation to the select board. And um, since that time, it has been um, retracted. So obviously, no action is required of us. Um, and the main reason it was retracted is um, some of the potential funding sources um, didn't come to bear. Um, and they're looking at potential rental or outsource type opportunities that may actually pull it completely out of capital's um, purview, because you're not going to be acquiring an asset in that um, particular instance or meet the capital threshold. Just to understand the magnitude of it, it was well north of thirty thousand um, dollars. What they were looking at, um, but it does touch obviously a lot of aspects. So basically, if you think about any grounds that the town maintains, this device um, equipment is used on, you know, a somewhat uh, regular basis on an at least annual basis, if not semi annually. So, um, no action tonight. I just thought it was important to understand that something was brought forward. Obviously, that department head um, is no longer with the town. Um, but Brian and Mark and the team have really worked behind the scenes to figure out what the path forward is. So we're not hampering department operations moving forward, but kind of taking a step from bringing forward something capital related. Are there any questions on that? Okay. The next is um, item five, assign a CIPC member to the new pilot committee. Um, so I knew that we're at the annual town meeting, know that there was a citizen's petition to add a pilot committee to the town's bylaws um, that actually um, passed a town meeting, but also um, the attorney general ratified it. So um, that is now part of the town bylaw. Uh, one of the items in there is it actually had a membership seat for the old capital planning committee. I assume they will just use the CIPC now um, if we are to put forward so put forward someone. Um, the charge was in um, your packet as well as the email that came from Katie Berry in the um, select board's office. And um, we have the option to appoint our own member. Um, 
if we so choose. Um, so I don't know if anyone has a interest in doing this and um, wants to step forward. Well, do we have any idea what the commitment's going to be? I don't. I um, I don't think anyone knows what it's going to be because it came out of a citizen's petition as opposed to um, normally, right? You, when you, you set up committees, right, at the select board or some other appointing authority setting up their committees. So it's probably going to be what that committee makes of it. Well, there was some, I'll call it guardrails put in place, I think, Mark, by the attorney general of what that, that committee could and couldn't do in terms of what they can do versus the statutory authority of the select board. So um, I, I don't know, Joe. I Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't think you had a real good idea. I just yeah. thought I'd ask, see if anybody had any idea. Um, it, it I'm going to roll off 21 Highland pretty quick, so I, I should free up some time. I'd be willing to pick it up. And if we want to, if some if we bring somebody in at a later time and they really want to take it from me, they can, I probably won't fight them too hard. Um, so we could use it as a lure because there, there are some people out there that do have a craw for this issue. I know because I was one of them before. So I'll take, I'd, I'd love to have it. Is there anyone else that would like to do it? All right, then I'll move that um, we assign Joe Palmer as our CIPC representative to the pilot committee. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Thank you, Joe. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, roll call vote. Hark? Aye. Palmer? Epstein. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And uh, Malinowski's aye, so that's a 401 vote. Um, the next is a request from the EDC regarding support for a full-time employee. Um, there was an email from Mr. Belniak in the um, packet. Uh, I will just say before we start any conversation, I personally, as a member of the personnel board, have already weighed on in on this um, from a personnel perspective. So I am going to hold any and all comments until the end and only respond as a CIPC member. Um, but um, I will chart our path forward a little bit in that um, we can choose to do nothing. We can choose to send a letter of support or we can choose to send a letter of no support, depending on where the committee falls out from this discussion. Um, I welcome any other potential paths, but um, I did think it at least was respectful to um, discuss it, given their request, and um, see where this committee wants to go. So I will be quiet and see if anyone had any thoughts um, of how we proceed as a committee responsive to the request. Jason, was this sent to advisory as well? Do you know? Um, it, it's tough to tell. This was very obviously driven towards capital. Um, I do know they obviously had to go in front of advisory for the budget meeting um, that occurred last Saturday. So okay. um, Mark or Brian can correct me, but I'm sure advisory is having more than their fair share of discussion on this topic. Has anyone said how expensive this person is? Um, they don't know because the job description has not been approved. And until you have a job description that's approved, you can't classify the person. Um, so I think the only way you could do costing on it would be to use the existing classification of the EDC coordinator, um, which was a prior part-time role. So, But you are adding a set of benefits at the bare minimum plus um, an additional 20 and a half hours, if I've got my math right. Yeah, so Jason, I I think it's a great idea. I really do. I'm sorry, Karen. I didn't, I didn't raise my hand there. No, go ahead. I think I think it's a great idea. I think the benefits theoretically outweigh the, the potential cost, but it just doesn't seem like it's in our purview. It's not a it's not a capital item. It's a it's a budgetary operating item, in my opinion. So I mean, we can lend our support to it, but there's not much teeth that has from our perspective. Um, okay, Karen. Yeah, I just, 
I don't know. I had some question about it, um, and I don't know if anybody here knows the answer. So, um, it, it it seemed like they were articulating that the reason they wanted to hire a full time person was because um, the part time position doesn't uh, um, attract the right kind of talent. And so I was wondering, you know, what that talent was and why part-time, you couldn't get it part-time versus full-time. And then it also looked like the position was going to be picking up um, other grant work. And I was wondering if there, that grant work is taking place somewhere else um, in the town. Those sound like great questions for Mr. Purple, if he's willing to answer them. So I'll take a stab at it. Um, I'll answer the second one first. So I think right now um, the the grant um, the grants are being handled by the departments as they um, become available. A lot of grants are annual, so you 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 know them, you anticipate them, you expect them. You're very familiar with the forms and what you have to fill out, what you have to provide, and so um, usually then it's just a matter of um of of available funding as to whether you get funded you know there are a lot of grants that um you know that aren't annual that you don't find out and out until sometimes it's too late sometimes you can't pull things together um this um the baker administration was famous for um we have 20 million dollars um here's the guidelines um submit applications go um and it was and you got to spend it in four weeks um, you know, it was, it was really one of those type of things in that, and I'm hoping that things change a little under this administration. So, um, so that's kind of how things go now. I think we we do a pretty good job with the stuff that is annual and that is reoccurring, and um, we do a fair um, job. Um, I think that's a, you know, uh, you know, we do have I think some issues, you know, trying to um you know uh, keep up with the other stuff so the we, we've had very difficult time over the past several years finding people to fill a part-time position 19 and a half hours no benefits um and um we actually i think one of the um you know um the best people that we had other than um the person who just left marika um, was a contract employee that we did through CMRPC, and um, the rate was a lot higher than what we would pay. But as a contracted service, um, we had the person for 12 to 13 hours a week, and we got great value. Um, unfortunately, they then left CMRP, CMRPC and went on to a full-time position elsewhere. Um, it's it's been difficult to find, and especially in this labor market, finding a part-time person is very difficult. No benefits, um, but I think the biggest problem that the boards are looking at right now with this position, besides the fact of how it is constructed, is that it's probably about seventy thousand um, dollars. Brian and I took thought about about seventy thousand dollars to increase the position from nineteen and a half hours to forty hours, and includes about thirty thousand dollars in benefits. Um, so it is a pretty, pretty big investment. I think there is a, you know, uh, you know, the return on your investment is probably mixed. This isn't one of those, what have you done for me lately positions? It's, it's difficult. You take a lot of swings and, you know, you get a lot of misses, um, but you do connect and, you know, um, but, but they um, don't always happen as frequently as you'd like them to, especially in this market. Um you know, with with the with the employment field just changing and and companies not renting the space and companies looking more remote options and you know Department of Revenue has basically reduced their office down to shared desk space that you can sign up for. Um, so it, it's 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 a I think it's a difficult field to hire into to begin with, and when you've only got a part time position that you're not offering benefits, it makes it that much harder to find a, find the right fit. Yeah, so thanks, Mark. And just a follow up question. So uh, is, I guess, what are your thoughts about this, the, the the revenue that this position would generate? Would it cover the cost of the person? Well, I think it depends. So, you know, if you take a look at, um, 
again, we're looking at grants, I think, that go beyond just simply the annual ones that we know about that fire <laughs> applies for every year and council on aging applies for every year. You know, it's those type of things. So I think the value is going to be in those grants outside of outside of those processes. Um, I think there's great potential for it, too. Um, I think with some of the money, um, I keep hearing that the state is just flush with money right now. They've just got to find vehicles to get it to the municipalities um, and, you know, in some way, shape or form. So I think I think there is value in the position, but I can't put a dollar figure on it. I can't say the position would be self-sufficient and I can't say that it would happen right away. But but I think there is great potential for it to be. Thank you. That answer your questions, Karen, or do you have anything else? Uh, that answers my questions. Thanks. Okay, Joe. Uh, I, I, I like the points that Jeff and Karen brought up. Um, I'm not sure this really is in our preview purview and um, building on what Karen was asking. I mean, I, we have heard discussions here and there about having a grant writer, um, having a grant writer in town. And the question is, you know, I, I'm not sure. I have to have a lot more information to know if I'd like this position. But if we were wrapping this position into this position into um, somebody that would write grants for different departments as well, you know, I'd be a lot more comfortable with the idea of adding somebody, especially at this cost, because uh, as we all know, there's just a lot more grant writing going on. And as you're saying, maybe even more coming down the pike. And certainly, if I defer to you to tell me whether we have in-house personnel to write those grants, um, not that we can necessarily acquire the expertise in this in, by hiring a person in this position, but um, do we have? Would it be beneficial to the rest of the town to have a person doing that? So, um, so I, I will I will say that there um, has been a discussion at the select board level. Um, not so much at the budget summit on Saturday, a little bit, but but there were conversations about whether or not, you know, we talk about economic development. It's important for our downtown. It's important for Route 9. You know, it's important to help um, fill some of these vacancies that we're seeing in the office buildings on Route 9. And the question is, can we do it on a part-time basis? You know, the EDC chair talked about how we had a part-time person who was giving us like full-time hours. And it was like, well, wait a minute. So if we need actually this part-time position should really be a full-time position, then why are we trying to put grants into it? You know, why don't we just look at a more robust, you know, EDC position and then look at the grant piece, you know, separately. Um, I, I think that, you know, it's 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 an interesting discussion. I'm not sure that we get to where we need to be that everyone is comfortable for town meeting. Um, I mean, you know, we've got to we've got to close up this warrant um, in another month, and I'm not sure that that we're going to get everyone on the same page. That doesn't mean that you know we couldn't get everybody on the same page for a fall meeting, um, but we'll, we'll see. Back to back to something you just said though. So what you sure. what you're saying is the this would really be a full-time position on its own without grant writing in it. Is that what you were inferring? It could be. It, it, that's, that's part of the discussion that the, that the select board has been having, um, you know, or it, it, the discussion came up at the meeting as to, you know, we talk about EDC and making it more robust. And you look at our neighbors in Marlboro and Westboro and, you know, what they, they've got very robust, you know, um, uh, commissions and self stand, self supporting, self standing, you know, really um, robust organizations. We have a part time position, so it's really not fair to be comparable, um, you know, to them. So there is there is the thought that possibly, you know, um, this could be a full time position all on its own. So in other words, don't take, you know, don't try to mix grant writing with EDC simply to get the full time position because maybe it, you know maybe it could be self-sustaining as a full-time position on its own. Okay. I, Cause I, I wouldn't compare us to many of the towns around us. We're too small. Don't have the commercial area to develop. I mean, West bros. <laughs> so um, thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Tony, I see your hand up. 
Yeah, I guess just listening to this discussion for five or 10 minutes here, I, I don't, I guess I will second or third the opinion. It doesn't seem like it's this committee's responsibility. Um, and, and if it was, then I'd have like three hours of questions. So um, this does not seem sufficiently baked for this committee to have an opinion. So uh, I'll, I'll just close it up with one final thought that in order for this position to become, uh, to go from Pinocchio to being a real boy, um, it needs to be, the job description needs to be approved by personnel board. Personnel board needs to place it on um, the, um, the classification grid. Um, and, and then town meeting needs to approve that as part of the bylaw. Personnel board's got one more meeting um, scheduled before the warrant gets finalized. And we still have a, it, this job description is in flux right now with advisory uh, select board has approved it, but with advisory and personnel board. So if if we can't all get on the same page, which at this point, I'm not quite sure is likely in the next couple of weeks. I don't think that this could, you know, this can happen for the March town meeting. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm kind of already starting to say, well, it may be something you could get everyone on the same page for the fall. I just don't see it for March. So um, I was of the view that everyone else has already expressed, but I thought it was important um, as the person that made the agenda to bring it forward for at least discussion in case I was um, out to lunch. So I, you know, while we are somewhat of a budgetary committee, um, personnel and the overall budget is not, that's not our job. Um, so um, I will um, just send a quick summary to the EDC saying that we're not really weighing in at this point. Um, if they would like to have a conversation with any one of us individually to try to seek support, if it did get on a warrant, then so be it. They can do that as we're all individual taxpayers in this community. Um, and then if it does go forward, um, we can certainly have a discussion on um, at least the grant piece if that stays in. Um, and if there's anything we want to weigh in specific to that, but um, let's wait for more information, it seems like. so. Unless anyone has anything else they want to add to that, uh, we'll move on from that topic. Okay. Um, item seven, I'm going to take together, but we probably need to do two separate motions um, for the benefit of Tony. Um, as you all remember, we spent most of our summer dealing with roads. Um, but one of the things that we advocated for was find other projects in town that required paving. Um, that we could bundle into the contract um, to hopefully get efficiency from those projects, but also bring up the efficiencies on the roads, because we all know we wanted to do more than we could um, based on you know what balance was there. Um, those two items that we had specifically targeted as what they call ad alts in the um, bid package um, related to the Trotter School parking lot and the golf course parking lot. Um, we're going to talk about Trotter School parking lot first. Um, so this was um, included through collabor collaboration with uh, Greg Martineau and Keith Lavoy from the school administration. Um, this had been a longstanding item on their capital plan. It is not town meeting funded. It comes from reserve fund that they get from facility use fees. But similar to what we did last year related to the Finn parking lot, um, we did take, um, obviously, the superintendent has submitted a memo at this point. And we did take a formal vote on it to use um, the revolving fund account um, to fund a project like this. Again, the bid is in um, and has been awarded by the select board. So um, the numbers are, are firm at this point on both projects we're gonna discuss, but I thought it was important to bring it back to this committee and um, thanks to Greg for submitting um, information for the meeting. So is there any questions on the Trottier School parking lot? All right, then I'm going to move that we support the superintendent's request related to the Trotter School parking lot in conjunction with the overall town road bid package as outlined in the memo. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Hark? Aye. Palmer? Aye. Schroner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. Aye. And Malinowski's eye. So that passes 5 0. Um, the next relates to the golf course parking lot. Um, this was originally submitted by Mark um, when the golf course committee was 
call it a little bit of a hiatus um, between their change in membership. And um, it was submitted at $150,000. Um, as you saw in the packet, um, it now, um, and apologies, this came in pretty late today. So I'll just make sure everyone's aware of the final cost. Um, the final cost was 63, um, 63,520. So not quite a hundred thousand less, but, um, certainly a significant amount less than what had been budgeted. Um, this would be funded through the golf revolving account, which is, um, with fees generated, um, from the management company through overall operations on the course. So, um, are there any, um, items that you would like to discuss on this particular item. All right, then I will move that capital uh, CIPC support the use of the golf course revolving funds um, related to the paving of the golf course parking lot. There a second. Second. Any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Hark? Aye. Palmer? Aye. Schoner? Yes, I should abstain. Okay, you're abstaining. Yep. Um, Wheeler? Aye. And uh, Malinowski is aye. So it's 401. Um, good luck with that project. Um, long time coming um, from walking that dirt road. So yeah, um, it's it's really, I you know, and I, I appreciate the committee's support for that. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, you know, Tony Schoner is the is the chair of the golf committee and and has really started to invigorate that committee again. Um, this has been the big issue for them. You know, they've they've asked for this for a long time. You know, when you start kicking up dust and dirt on that road, um, where does it go? It goes all over the police cruisers, which are parked all right next to the road. Um, and, you know, we've been trying to figure out a way to do this. Um, Jason pointed out to me earlier that the original estimate was $150,000. Um, um, but back when we started asking question several years ago before Conservation Commission gave us the authority to pave it, um, that price was about where we were now with the 60, 62, $65,000 range. So I'm really glad that we got back there with this bid. Um, I tried to convince Brian Valentine to bond it. He refused. Um, and so, um, you know, I don't blame him. Um, so we'll have the available revenue um, in the golf revolving fund to do this after we finish the T reconstruction work, which is um, uh, been put out as a rebid um uh actually we just got the bids back in so we need to review them and then get them to select board to look at and then hopefully um we're probably not going to have a whole lot of golf revenue left for the remainder of calendar 23 and maybe calendar 24 before we can look at doing you know um another project of any significance so um again appreciate the committee's uh, support for this all right um all right we are going to move on to 2023 town meeting preparation. So at our last meeting in December, um, jointly with select board and advisory, we heard the Algonquin um, Regional High School um, athletic complex presentation. We didn't take any positions that night. So obviously a lot of discussion amongst many committees. Um, I wanted to see if the committee was ready to vote um, where they stand on that uh, for purposes of informing town meeting. Is there anyone not ready to vote? Okay. Um, I will mention the funding for the project, which was most of the discussion, I thought. I didn't think there was a lot of discussion on need or um, there was a little bit on the turf um, at the end, but the funding is still very much a question of what will come from South Borough CPA, what will come through general fund, but um, anything I have heard, this is not gonna impact taxes until 20, the FY 2027. I think that's the only static thing we keep hearing other than maybe some residual interest. So um, regardless of whether the project moves forward or not in this year, um, the cost will really not be borne for a few years once the other debt is retired, um, but more to come on that. It, it, 
you know, the superintendent, I think, is trying to make it simple as possible um, because he has to deal with two towns, two town meetings. Um, and then there are definitely other ideas out there in terms of what's best for Northboro versus what's best for Southboro. Um, I can assure you that Mark and Brian are very much part of those conversations. I've been looped in to a few um, as well, just to make sure um, we have a right plan, but there is not the exact plan yet, other than this does not have an impact on your taxes next year. This is more of a longer term project. So see if that generates any additional questions. Otherwise, I'm going to make a motion and see where we land. Um, any questions? All right, then I'm going to move that the um, CIPC support the Algonquin Regional um, High School Athletic Complex being presented at the 2023 Annual Town Meeting. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Park? Aye. Palmer? Aye. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski is aye. So that is unanimous. I will keep everyone posted. I'm sure that will be the last thing Mark finalizes in the warrant if I had to make a prediction based on where, where that's at. Um, okay. Um, try to your school HVAC unit. So if you recall, we did talk to the select board about, um, I don't know if I'll call it the forgotten HVAC funds from the state, but certainly something that I don't think was front of mind for a lot of people. Um, for the $100,000, the select board has discussed it at this point, and is my understanding, it has no other HVAC project for non-school town-owned buildings. So um, they have offered the 100,000 to the next capital item related to HVAC in a town-owned building, which would be at the Trottier School. Um, Greg Martineau and Keith Lavoy have um, gotten a latest price estimate and it's holding. So that's also good news at $250,000. Um, that was also in the superintendent's memo to the committee about what he's looking for. So he is looking for support for $150,000 um, to fund the residual part of that project to get it done this year. Again, we are accelerating a project. Um, I will tell you, I did ask for written confirmation from him, Keith, in the facility supervisor over there, Brian Fantoni, that when they go to replace the roof, in a year or two, that this HVAC unit isn't gonna have to come up and like basically start from scratch. And I have, we have gotten that in writing as well. Um, they're completely independent based on the area where this unit's going. I think um, Greg's memo was self-explanatory in terms of the issues they're currently facing. So I would have argued it probably should have been on this year's capital plan to begin with, but I know they always try to be cognizant of um, other things. So, um, We'll talk a little bit about funding source in a second um, when we get to the next items, but I will give you kind of a preview is um, this would normally be a general fund item, but um, the select board will have it in their purview to use the tax relief bucket that the ARPA committee um, allocated and Brian can walk through what he was thinking there, but this may or may not hit your taxes, but what we need to do is vote on as a, is it ready? Is this the right time? And is this the right project, um, given the other facts that we have and that we already have $100,000 in the bank for it? So open it up for questions, comments on that particular piece. So so the idea is that they're gonna take ARPA funds from the that the ARPA committee assigned and re-funnel it back into this? Is that? A, a series of one-time capital projects. So. Um, at their last meeting, they took a vote to take 500K of tax relief that mm -hmm. you had all allocated, at least you and Tony as part of a broader group, yep. had recommended for one-time projects to, okay. to lower the tax okay. rate this year. Right. So this is one item that has been flagged as a potential one-time project that, so it doesn't hit the tax rate in the spirit of tax relief, um, but otherwise it would be general fund if that didn't move forward. Excellent. Okay. Do you have a question, Jeff? Yeah, just quickly. Is there any expiration on that hundred thousand dollars from the state? Does it just need to be um, basically 
you know, benchmarked for this project or does it have to be done by a certain point? Do we have any risk of losing that? I guess is what I'm trying to say. If we approve it this year, there's no risk of losing it because then you would have appropriated it and they'd be able to go out to bid. Okay. Um, I think the concern, I don't have the exact dates in front of me, although we should all have them probably memorized at this point, is um, you do have to use the funding by a certain point a couple of years down the road and knowing how fiscal years run, right? And how town meeting process runs. There was a general concern that if you wait another year, A, is the price going to change? Who knows, right? Or stabilize. And B, um, are you going to run <coughs> close to when you actually have to use the money by? You muted yourself when you just. No, I th thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Um, so then I will move that the CIPC support accelerating the charter school HVAC uh, unit um, for a total cost of $250,000 with 100,000 coming from state ARPA funding forward to the um, FY24 capital plan. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote, Hark. Aye. Palmer. Aye. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski's aye. So that's unanimous. Okay. Um, does everyone have the Excel spreadsheet open for capital articles, or do you need me to um, pop it open on the screen as well? All right. Just let me know if I lose anyone at any point. What I thought I would do first is have Mark or Brian just at high level, we're gonna go line by line just to give an update on a few items, but just walk through the exercise that you went through at the direction of the select board so that the community understands what you what parameters you're working with from an overall budget perspective, why you did this, why you have different buckets, and then we can obviously update a few items as we go here, but I think the background is really important to understand what we're talking about, given that technically capital already made its recommendations, but really this is what's gonna end up coming to town meeting. Yeah, I'm more than happy to defer to Brian on this one. He saw that one coming a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's nice. Um, so the, the board gave us direction to try to get to a 6% and a 5% tax rate um, as a goal for FY24. So we quickly realized that a big piece of this is the capital um, and how we uh, handled that. There was no way we could get to a, uh, in fact, we did not get to the 5% because one of the caveats of the exercise was not to reduce services in town. And um, there was really no way to get below about 5.6% or 5.7% without starting to cut departments and starting to reduce labor and services and all that. So the bottom line for this committee is, um, of course, one of the when we were allowed $500,000 in opera money to offset various items, one time items, things of that nature. And, um, you know, the team who was the assessor, the accountant, myself and Mark, um, went through and assigned funding sources for uh, not only capital, but other items. And, you know, the bottom line is we, we took a lot of the capital and actually assigned it to opera money, um, which, which made sense. Uh, there's a lot of one-time things that are on the capital list for a town meeting this year. So, um, you know, we took that advantage of the, of the board's direction to that. Um, and I'm sure you, you can see that by the documents you have. Um, we, did a, we did do a few other things as far as, you know, using some donation money and other things to offset some capital too. But um, there's no doubt that this year is a weird year and um, we ended up putting a lot of capital money through either opera or other sources of funding. Um, 
it's just the way it is. It's the only way you can do the reach the goals that the uh, the board, the select board gave us. So um, we can take a look at it, but I think it's I think it's a good plan. The only thing I'd, I'd, I'd probably point out is I don't think the selectmen had an appetite, Mark can correct me, but um, there seemed, they, I know they made mention of not uh, pushing out capital to next year, to, to FY25. Um, that was mentioned and uh, the board seemed to be in full um, support of, you know, getting the capital through that we need to this year. So it's in like, my opinion is it's unlikely they'll take up pushing off any capital. However, the one, the one thing I do want the board to do tonight and, and, you know, if Mark agrees is to at least tell us the first, you know, one or two items that would be on the bubble if we had to push something off till next year. We do have a meeting tomorrow night that the budget is primarily the main topic and um, you know, that question may be asked if, if, even if it's not asked, we should have the answer to what the capital committee supports. If we had to put off an item or two, what it would be. So I think that's, a, that's a, definitely a decision that uh, this, this committee could make tonight and uh, we could carry forward to tomorrow night. And I wish it was reversed. I would almost wish it was the select board meeting before we did tonight, but <laughs> That's just the way it is. So um, again, I don't think they will support that, but we should be ready for the answer. So I hope that's enough background to move forward. Anyone have any questions in the background? Um, Brian, the one thing, um, first, thank you to you and your team for, I will call it the collaboration and kind of keeping everyone informed, right? I think it's very easy for us to work in a silo and just just look at capital and not think about um, anything else that's going on. But in your in your 5.6, I think, percent you said, was your number, um, it's important to make sure everyone remembers this whole shift, right? Like, and we could have, you know, whole discussion on that, but the budget itself is not going up 5.6%, correct? It's the expected impact on the residential taxpayer is going up 5.6%. If the budget stopped moving today, is that a fair statement? Yes. Yeah, so basically it's about a two to two and a half percent swing. So the budget we have in front of us today with the capital included with opera using to offset this capital items is about a three and a half percent budget, which is pretty darn good actually in these times. So, um, you know, that's the kind of message we're gonna bring tomorrow night is to say that this budget is, although it's, you know, and, and Mark, I think will agree that um, it's built on a lot of one-time money, um, which is a problem, but it, it is good to get through this year. So it's a good budget. Like I said, if you take away the swing of the commercial and residential, it's probably more like a three and a half percent budget. Um, which, which you know, with the inflationary uh, pressures is very reasonable, I think. So again, I think the board tomorrow night will support all the capital, but um, you know, we just need a little more information to what your committee thinks to, to bring forward tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, so here's what I would like to do is um, just go down the list. We're not gonna have to go down this whole list because some don't relate to capital, but Brian's giving me, it was easier just for him to give it to us this way. But just talk about where each of the capital items that we previously approved stand, potential updates. And if we have a consensus, I don't plan to re-vote every single thing. I'll probably do kind of an omnibus sort of motion at the end that we support any discussion that occurs here. So the first item on row two is the um, the um, cabin chassis for truck 43 at the DPW. This was $200,000 that we previously approved, had it at a general fund. Brian is recommending to the select board that they fund that out of ARPA as part of tax relief. Um, Brian, I personally had no objection to that. I just think the select board needs to be aware that there's a truck like that 
every year, right? So I right, so we will have a little bit of a I'll call it jump, all things static for that particular department next year, if that's the the way they go. But I don't know that it's our job to pick and choose what goes into ARPA and what doesn't, unless anyone disagrees with that. Um, what I'm going to do instead of asking every time if anyone has any questions, just interrupt me or raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to keep going. Um, I'm going to assume everyone's in favor of where we're trending unless you speak up. Um, road maintenance, this is unchanged. We recommended 400,000. I'm not aware of the pavement management program being completed, um, but obviously we have to do something. And um, there's a lot of historic data that supports that number is a good number to you know continue to check off street. So any other comments on that? Next one should generate some discussion. Um, this is the only thing you removed, Brian, right? From what I can tell, right? Um, and it's somewhat inconsistent with what you said, the select board don't want to defer capital, but this is obviously a new capital item. We've been trying to put this forward for many years of maintaining sidewalks, not new sidewalks. So there is a significant amount of ARPA funding that was allocated towards sidewalks, and that needs to start to probably move forward if we get a DPW superintendent. But um, I think capital needs to weigh in on whether removing the full 200 is the right answer. You're, you're talking, Brian. Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, I thought I hit it. Uh, Mark may be able to correct me on this. There is a set amount of money in the opera set asides for sidewalk maintenance. That's why we removed that. I, I can't remember the amount. I think thought it was a pretty good amount too. I think it's um, about 700,000. It is. Yeah. But yeah. Tony or Joe need to keep me honest on this. My understanding was that was geared towards expansion of the sidewalk network, not uh, maintenance of the existing infrastructure. That's correct. So obviously the select board can do what they please with that, but I just wanted to be genuine to what I understood the recommendation to be. So, but I understand why you would argue that, Brian, for sure. So does anyone have any strong thoughts on this? Yeah, Brian, if you were to put that back in, and what would that do on the on the rate differential? Uh, so that would be about a half a percent on the tax rate. So you'd be back at about a um, you'd be back at the, about the six percent level. But your, they asked. Net, what about your net number that you mentioned? You mentioned three percent. Is it like three and a half now? Oh, so yeah, it would be about three and a half. Yes, yes. I just feel like that one's going to get a lot of pushback, given all the. You know, all the feedback and dialogue at you know previous town town meetings. So I don't know. Just thinking about how much that's actually going to be incremental to everyone's everyone's pocketbook doesn't seem like it's going to be that significant to keep it in. And the board can all the, the, this board can always you know opine that that you do recommend that be left in. I mean I'm you know these things were were sort of. Uh, you know, to try to meet a goal in a very difficult time. But, you know, I understand what you're saying, Jeff, so. <laughs> no, I totally respect what you did, Brian. I'm just quite, I'm just, I tried to understand how much of an actual impact it would have for. I mean, one of the, one of, yeah, Jeff, one of the things we tried to do too, when we were looking at this is trying to take out anything new. And quite honestly, we've never funded the sidewalk, um, the sidewalk maintenance either. So, you know, not to be cheeky about it, but we did still consider it new. It's the second year we've tried to fund it. Um, and so, you know, until we actually do fund it, it's it's still a new piece. So that was something that we took out. Um, the select board had kind of, you know, looked at that and kind of headed in that direction, just not didn't take that final vote. And I think was waiting to see the discretion that the finance team was going to bring forward. Got it. So I think we have three options on this. We can accept Brian's full removal um, recommendation, which Brian, if I were in your position, would totally have gone that way. But obviously, we also listen to the resident, you know, have listened to the resident feedback. We could take the 200 and recommend a different number, right? So really, Jeff just asked, you know, what the maximum impact is, but, you know, to start something, right? Um, and the select board could decide whether they 
I mean, it's technically part of a separate article anyway, so um, people can use their discretion on that or um, ask them to specifically allocate through ARPA um, an ability to start a maintenance plan on some of the existing um, sidewalks with a commitment to continue um, this moving forward. Um, or you could knock down the road maintenance to 350 and, and specifically allocate 50 to sidewalks. Um, but I think we all know what state our roads are in too. So um, that would be solving one problem and creating another. So those are, I think, the options we have on the table. Um, I don't know if anyone has a strong view of which direction to go. I just have a quick question, question Jason. The 700,000 in ARPA funds that is for that is for new sidewalks, is there any opportunity to take some of that and put it to sidewalk maintenance instead? They, they could do it all to sidewalk maintenance, I guess. Tony and Joe should speak to as the, the individuals that were part of that recommendation. If there's any distinction or strong feelings from the committee in terms of why it was worded that way. Uh, it, it was it was felt that this was a generational uh, opportunity to expand the network and we had the, the master plan already had a list of projects ranked um, the top, I believe, eight projects were ranked in terms of the sidewalks in town. Um, if we don't start doing them, we probably never will. That's just about where we are. And and don't get me wrong. I mean, it, just to put a context on it. I mean, when, we're, when they're talking about doing the water table and ripping up Parkerville, um, if the town decides not to put a sidewalk on Parkerville when they do the Hoppington Water Project, if they decide to do it, my street outside is not likely to see one for another 15 to 20 years. Because when they redo it, if they don't put a sidewalk in, they're not going to go back and do a sidewalk on that street. So, um, you know, anytime, anytime we do a road or a project like we're doing 85, if we don't redo that sidewalk or put it in at that time, we're not going to get one. So um, I would... I think everybody on the committee was on board with saying what we really were looking for was at least one or two good expansions of the sidewalks in town to make it a more pedestrian and friendly town to bikers and walkers. And the only thing I'll add is I, I think the sentiment of the ARPA committee was that it was for like one time expenses. Um, and it seems like if we want to maintain our sidewalks, they should be maintained, you know, outside of the ARPA funds. Right, that's I do recall that about these this being for new projects. Thank you. All right, where has everyone landed on this one? I I wouldn't I would love some of it to be put back in. It doesn't have to be a full two hundred, but I, I would even be supporting um, at least a hundred getting back in, um, just because we have to start somewhere in in getting this moving, and we can allocate more money next year or push for more money next year, but at least get something on the page under sidewalk maintenance. I was willing to go as low as 50, to be completely honest, but I do agree that we need to do something because otherwise we are being tone deaf to um, basically, I think what we, we I mean, we, we dealt with it the most this summer, right? You, you both dealt with it on ARPA, right? And I, I get you on the expansion. So unless they can find something in ARPA, like in un, undistributed amounts, so to say, then I think we need to recommend something. So I'm fine with 100. I'm fine with 50. I'm okay also going down from 200. Um, so we're at least where I'm at. I don't know. So Joe, I heard 100. Jeff, where are you at? I think 100 is fair to start. Tony? I think we should maintain our sidewalks. Let's do 100. Like we recommend 100. The select board can make whatever choice they want. Yep. Karen? Sounds good to me. Yeah. So we'll encapsulate that in a motion at the end because um, I'm hearing wide consensus on that. Um, Brian, you, Mark, and I can coordinate on how we make sure. I, I did talk to Kathy this afternoon too and warned her that there's probably going to be something that needs to be updated um, for purpose of the packet. And I told her we'd coordinate. So I think that's probably your first update. Um, 
Okay. Um, operation supervisor vehicle. Um, as you recall, this is a total of 105,000, 75,000 um, of it um, allocated out of um, originally the general fund. Um, Brian has now swapped it to the ARPA category. And then um, the residual of it would be out of the water fund um, based on how, how the truck is used. Um, as you know, this one came in very late, was not part of our planning cycle. We all know the, the turnover at the DPW, um, but it did come in. We acknowledged it. We discussed it. We put a placeholder. Um, we certainly raised a concern about take home um, vehicle policy. Um, Mark has re, um, worked with the select board and actually this position actually in the collective bargaining agreement, as I understand it, actually is authorized to take home vehicle. So people, I think, misunderstood um, we obviously weren't going after the policy part of it, um, although people naturally usually like to talk about those things. We were talking about what type of vehicle should you be taking home to be able to get back and forth. Um, so I had a little conversation with Chris Leroy, who is the um, DPW operations superintendent, um, just to get his, his view on the world. Um, he obviously is the one that stands to benefit the most, I guess, from this vehicle, but also knows what he needs to do his job effectively. And I think um, what I, from everything I've heard, uh, he does nothing but great work for the town. So I, I just wanted to hear it directly from the person that needs the vehicle. And I was surprised with what I learned. Um, that vehicle doesn't need to be replaced. Um, in fact, the vehicle that likely needs to be replaced the most is, um, a 2004 pickup truck that is assigned to the DPW superintendent. Um, that vehicle is getting about eight miles per gallon um, currently is what I understand. And um, while it hasn't even hit 100,000 miles, I think we know what, um, by my math, almost 20 years of um, sitting in a salty um, sort of environment and doing plow operations can do to a vehicle in the Northeast. Um, so he believes he can get at least another five years out of the current operation supervisor vehicle. Um, he believes though that the pickup truck that is assigned to the DPW superintendent um, likely should be replaced um, based on those facts. 20, almost 20 years old, um, end of useful life, obviously horrible mileage by anyone's standards. Um, but the other fact that should just raise is um, the quote, for the operation supervisor vehicle has now come from 105 down to 87,000. So we're trending in the right direction all around. Um, this conversation was recent, so I don't have a full quote of what the pickup truck would be. Um, but with a plow, it was very clear it was not going to be greater than $50,000. And um, the important part of the plow um, is um, it does exempt certain parts of certain parts of the um, green communities in terms of what type of vehicle you can and can't get. And this vehicle needs to be able to plow, um, was very clear. So we have a few, few things we can do. Um, we can accept this recommendation and replace the pickup truck, which would also likely be the vehicle that's going to and from home. So not a much smaller vehicle, not like tremendously smaller, but certainly not a diesel. Um, going back and forth to um, the individual's home. Um, or we could proceed um, as originally planned um, and realize that the cost is coming down. Or option three is we could just wait for a DPW superintendent, which we will not have a recommendation on before town meeting in terms of how to proceed on this, which means that the earliest that they, the department would be able to deal with this item would be the fall. And I think there's a general desire not to deal with budgetary items in the fall if 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 you can. So again, I'm a little surprised, um, but it's all trending the right direction. So I'll take it. Um, I don't know where others um, think we should go. Um, so I'll open the floor. Go ahead, Jeff. Finally raising my hand. Um... I mean, I think that we need the person in charge of that department to make a decision on if the DPW superintendent needs a new car. Um, 
Can I offer maybe a fourth option? Can, can we possibly allocate some of that money from ARPA back into the sidewalks to get it closer to the original 200 if we were to pass on this $105,000 spend? Or 70, sorry, 75 from the general. Yeah, fund. you should probably look at 75 because the other 35 was coming from another funding yeah. source. Certainly happy to entertain the option. Uh, what are others think of that option or any of the three that I threw out to begin with? Go ahead, Joe. Um, I guess I'd like to know how important this pickup truck is in terms of its usability. I mean, if 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 they're putting a, this pickup with a plow on it and they're going to need it to do plowing um, or other business in the DPW, I mean, if it's normally and regularly used, um, rather than just a drive home vehicle, that's something that I'd be very interested in knowing. Um, my understanding is up until January of 2022, the DPW superintendent was using it for her day to day responsibilities, including take home uh, vehicle, which was contractually um, part of her contract. But yeah, it's it's used for operations, it's used for plowing, and it's used for day-to-day -day driving when it doesn't have a plow on it. And you were told that it is needed. Um, I don't know that I can advocate that anyone should be driving around at eight miles per gallon um, <laughs> these days because there is an operational budget consideration to this too, right? Um, it is used currently, um, is my understanding, even though we don't have a superintendent because they can redeploy the the assets to, to, to fill the needs of the department. I don't know, Mark, if you have any any other insight that I wasn't able to glean from this discussion. No, I, I think that pretty much pretty much covers it until we we get a new uh, department head. Go ahead, Tony. And the downside of waiting for the new department head? Likely waiting another budget year, unless the, the powers that be are willing to entertain a financial budget article in the fall if it's needed. So the, the example I was thinking through is, um, it's very common for department supervisor of that department in particular to have a take-home vehicle. So, if you hire the person, they're giving it in their contract. You're now giving them a 2004 vehicle to drive to and for, from wherever they come. And it's obviously an asset that if, let's just say, another vehicle breaks down um, that you have to plow, albeit it's not the one you would send out to plow a major thoroughfare, but it obviously, we have a lot of side streets, et cetera, in town. So um, I think you... What I, from what I understand, the reason it came in so last minute is um, they looked at their capital in the out years, i.e. the next three to four years, and realized that um, there was really no good place to, to put it. And obviously, you start kicking things down the road, then it's going to have a, a ripple effect on trucks beyond this. That was, I just think they candidly picked the wrong truck originally to throw out there. Yeah, it is very hard without a department head, though. Um, not going to lie. Um, Jeff? Jason, did you say that, <clears throat> excuse me, a comparable car, a comparable truck for the superintendent to replace would be about 50? No more, that? no more than 50, and that includes the cost to get a plow for it. Okay. So not, not to make it even more complex, could we do a... Can I rescind my prior recommendation and say that maybe we replace the 25 with a $50,000 truck, then use the, the rest of the 25 to get the sidewalk maintenance up to 125. So you're saying, well, I guess, Brian, this is where we need you because the 50 likely should then be also allocated to water, correct? Correct. Yes. Same, same, same distribution, right? Okay. So it wouldn't even be fifty coming at ARPA. So that that would help your your math if I'm doing my math correctly, Jeff. Right. 
it just seems like there's going to be a savings on the operational budget as well from a, a just a fuel perspective. Yeah, I I guess no one no one wants to replace the operation supervisor's vehicle at this point for the eighty seven. Is that fair? Okay, so we have a tough time replacing something that still has five years of life left on it. Which is basically the summary of that. Um, where are people? Forget about the math to the sidewalk for a second, Jeff. I just want to see where people are at on pickup truck or no at this point for an amount no greater than 50. Uh, for me, I think the, the bigger issue is that we're on the hook for a vehicle for the new superintendent come in. And whether that whether we allocate it six months from now or now, I, I'm not sure that that makes, it makes an operational difference to them, not necessarily a huge tax implication um, to the citizens now. And and they may come in and say they don't need it, in which case, you know, that money will become available back to the town, um, or at least that allocation. So I'm I'm in favor of putting it on the books and seeing what happens. Um, um, as let, me, to... let me throw another scenario out there, Joe. Is um, this vehicle could also be used for purposes of the operation supervisor? And what we know, the only thing we know at this point is that role is contractually obligated to a take home vehicle. So this vehicle could also be in that role as well and provide the reliability for coming back in a snow event or other weather event. I mean, Just we're looking at an almost 20 year old truck that we'd be sending around plowing. Hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah, there are a whole lot of things in here that don't. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're kind of, I just, I don't want to. I'm, I'm on board with putting, putting a pickup truck on the books. Okay. All right. Tony, Karen, Jeff, are you on board with the pickup truck or no at this point? Yeah, I think it probably would also help <clears throat> from a recruiting perspective. You might open up some or keep some options of candidates if they know they're going to get a reliable truck versus having to drive around a 20-year truck that you know could break down at any point. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Jeff. So I, I, I support the purchase. It's fine with me. Okay. So Jeff, I'm not ignoring your consideration about sidewalks. Let's let's take, we'll put 50, we'll do some allocation um, between water and general fund. I need to keep going on the list though, because I want to make sure you don't want to creep anything else back in based on where we land here. It's so, fine. okay. Um, all right, library installation of security cameras, nothing has changed here um, and it's coming out of the general fund. Townhouse office furniture replacement, the 25,000 has shifted from the general fund to ARPA per Brian's recommendation. Facilities maintenance fund, the annual 100K would stay uh, general fund. The DPW annex new furnace um, has shifted um, 15,500 from general fund to ARPA. Um, Brian, this is me speaking. I don't know what the rest of the committee says, but um, on this 15.5, um, I think it's really important that they confirm that they have no intentions of doing anything with that building in the near term, like from a disposal perspective. Yes, I agree. I don't care what they, if they're, as long as they're committed to using it for town purposes, um, I'm in favor of it, but if they're going to bring a warrant next year, and I get the board can change, but at least who's sitting in those seats right now, I think it's important for them to affirm that or let us know what information they need um, on that. Um, fire PPE, this is a $40,000 expense. I confirmed with Chief Achilles today that based on his replacement plan, he still needs the forty. The good news is St. Mark's has already offered 20K to fund that. So that's why you see the reduction to 20K. So the, the remainder um, now is um, slotted for the general fund. But um, I think we may have some more discussion on that um, once we get down to the ambulance fund. Police cruisers. Um, this number has stayed the 148 at a general fund. 
uh, facilities elevator repairs. Um, this has moved 23,000 from general fund to an ARPA recommendation. Uh, we talked about that, at the need for that at the last meeting. Um, the police rifles are coming out all together um, in terms of town meeting warrant. Um, they're gonna use existing Harvard funds that are already in the bank um, to purchase those. And um, the school HVAC, um, we obviously just add, accelerated it in the capital plan. That would not come out of the general fund. So it doesn't, it's not included in Brian's 5.6% and would come out of ARPA. Any questions on any of that? All right, I'm gonna skip over the FY24 budget articles that has nothing to do with capital. Um, and we're going down to FY24 ambulance fund. Uh, the first one is the all-terrain utility vehicle for 40,000. Um, all of these things we originally recommended out of ambulance fund and are still in the ambulance fund unless we strike them as we talk through them. Um, there's no update on the need for this. I just will say I was informed that there's both select board and advisory um, members that um, have a variety of questions on it. I think we heard most of them actually when we had our joint meeting with them. So I expect there to be discussion on this in general um, tomorrow night, um, even though taking it out doesn't really impact the tax rate unless they allocate this 40,000 from the ambulance fund to the general fund. Um, is there anyone that's changed their view on this, this one? Okay. Um, defibrillators, paramedic. Um, when I spoke to the chief, um, he does not see any way he's going to be ready to procure these anywhere in and around July 1st. So he's recommending we push this off to the earliest of fall um, town meeting. Um, the reason that the ambulance fund is important in general is um, there are certain accounting rules that unless anyone really wants a lesson on um, how these, these, these funds work is the money actually has to be in the bank on the data town meeting to be able to fund all of these plus our prior debt obligations that we've um, committed to um, in prior town meetings. If we went with this current list, Brian's you know, estimate along with Carla is that we'd be a little short, um, potentially up to $40,000 short if you kind of follow the trending. Um, well, we'd have the money in the bank by the end of the year, just the way that municipal accounting works, especially the way this fund was set up. We just can't do it. So we are going to have to cut something from the ambulance fund. The chief has, has obviously offered this one. And unless anyone um, disagrees, he's not going to spend it even if we give it to him until he's ready. He's got uh, one of his lieutenants looking at a program on this. So um, my recommendation would be to take it out unless anyone disagrees. Um, durable medical equipment, nothing's changed here for 20,000. Ambulance power stretcher for 55, nothing has changed. Um, fire truck, truck 21, this was the chassis and body repair that has a much longer story to it in terms of the overall plan. Um, we had made a recommendation that um, the chief really put together, you know, an internal committee and or whatever he thought he needed internally within his department and come before not only capital, but select board and advisory, given the magnitude of the, the longer term implications of this apparatus, um, given it would be the most expensive vehicle by far that we own in this town. Um, while removing it or keeping it in really doesn't change um, funding in FY24, because Brian um, had initially planned to bond this particular one, um, it's not ready for town meeting discussion. So the chief has recommended pulling that one out as well. Again, it has a much different impact than the defibrillators where Brian was going to appropriate, but um, the recommendation here is to pull it out. So unless anyone thinks it's ready and wants to push it through, that's coming out. Um, the last two are not discussions because we've already approved those in prior um, years. These are just lease payments for decisions we made a couple of years ago. Um, any questions on any of that? Um, okay, so 
I'm just looking down the list. The op supervisor vehicle again appears underwater. Um, so we'll talk about how we're going to finalize our recommendation on that. The fire portable radios on row 56 are uh, moving forward as planned. Um, it would be bonded um, and there would be enough capacity to bond those um, through the ambulance fund. Um, I guess, Brian, for you and Mark, this committee has not talked about breaking the kill or the pocket park. Not sure how much any of us really want to talk about it, but we should get a um, a reading of whether those are capital projects or separate projects. I, I don't know enough about either one, um, but we don't have to talk about that tonight. You should just see whether select board wants anything. I know there's plenty of people looking over both. So um, at least I personally am not offended if we don't have to get involved with either, but I want to respect the policy. Um, okay. So, um, Brian, I think we've, through this conversation, we obviously have changed the sidewalk. We have a pickup truck. We'll come, come back to Jeff's potential recommendation in a second. Um, we removed 100000 from the ambulance fund, which gives you more than enough cushion there now to not have to worry about it. Um, those are the main things I think we've done thus far. Um, I'm going to throw something out, Jeff, just for consideration is um, I was thinking with the quote unquote savings that we had out of the ARPA bucket um, and realizing that Brian left kind of 12, uh, you know, just over um, $11,000 in that bucket to begin with um, before we started allocating. I was thinking that it would be more appropriate for the um, UTV, if, if, if the select board thought that that was such a priority to fund that out of ARPA, as opposed to the um, ambulance fund, which would pretty much eat away at your recommendation. That's where I, that's at least where I came into this meeting at. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to your recommendation either though. Um, but I think um, the reason I was trending that way is it would give the select board some discretion to increase the general, the offset from the ambulance fund to the general fund, which would directly impact all of our um, tax rates and really make them, um, you know, responsible for what I would call the longest lived asset on the, the capital plan without being purchased. Like it, it clearly was a, a want more than a need for many years, but I think the chief has obviously made some very compelling arguments in, in the more recent years that were, I think, a little different than some of the initial presentations. So that's where I was kind of trending, just to give Brian a little more wiggle room in the ambulance fund, um, let them make some policy decisions on how much should go from the ambulance fund to the general fund, and you know, even potentially ask if to the extent that there are Harvard funds available, um, on the fire side, given the contribution that Chief Newell made, if that's a priority capital item for them, allocate it to the UTV or something else in here, just to, um, you know, in, in in light of everything we're talking about. So I throw that on the table. I'm not not wed to it, but just was another way of looking at this. And now there's silence. So <clears throat> just to repeat what you said. So take the 75 out, replace it with, let's call it 35. Um, pick up track -ish. We said a 30-70 split, right, Brian? Between water and... Yeah, so that's 35,000. Yeah, something like that. So that gives you a $40,000 net. So you'd plug in the ATV into that. Yeah, so okay. so if I do that, you'd have a pickup truck for thirty five thousand coming out of ARPA, and then you would have um, that brings you to four forty eight five hundred for total number. Um, if I did my math right, so that would give you candidly fifty one 
thousand five hundred to allocate towards the UTV. You don't have to obviously <laughs> allocate the full amount, um, but you would allocate if you allocated the forty, then you'd give Brian more room in the ambulance fund. Um, you'd accomplish the UTV item sooner before the prices go up again, and. Um, the only thing it would jeopardize was your proposal to add a hundred thousand to the um, side, you know, be, add beyond the hundred thousand on sidewalks. Yeah, <clears throat> Jason, you did you did allude to the PPA a couple minutes ago. Something about that and the ambulance fund. Mm -hmm. We'll have to push that back in and then free up. So, Brian, if we did this, is there any reason the PPE wouldn't move to the ambulance fund? No. So that would free up twenty thousand Jeff at a general fund to assist with sidewalks or other things. Yeah. So then that chain which would be about an eighty thousand increase in capital. Correct. Of which I think we would have just given them the ability to pull all of that from the ambulance fund if they really wanted to. Not our policy decision, though, I don't think. But I think we're giving them, I think we're giving them more tools in their toolbox. They can choose whether they want to go to town meeting. But I think this committee has been loud and clear that zero for sidewalk maintenance is just not where we want to trend based on the feedback that we're getting, specifically yeah. capital. And as per Brian's numbers before so we're, we'd be under a quarter percent increase over what has already been allotted just under a quarter okay. um if the other see. thing i probably should have led with is, and joe this will be of interest to you in your brand new role tonight um kathy cook select board chair but also um is their i'll call it pilot liaison to the schools because that committee wasn't formed um she has not completed her discussions with them so to the extent that those discussions yield a penny more for the town from any any institution um that will again give them flexibility to work with which is why i think it's very important that we took the position we did in sidewalks so jeff where, where are you at do you want to try to Plug more think, sidewalks, or you want to? What do you want to do with the UTV versus sidewalks? I think that makes sense. It gives you more flexibility in the ambulance fund in case those funds don't come in, and we're, we're we're stuck with some of those, as you call them, municipal accounting considerations. That gives you more flexibility because that gives you what one hundred twenty thousand dollars of flexibility that's not built into there right now, theoretically. Um, yeah, I don't see that as a an issue in my opinion. And I think you're right about talking with St. Mark's because one of the, uh, if I remember correctly, one of the top master plan priorities for sidewalks was building down 85 down by St. Mark's. Well, that, it, well, I don't, I don't think we should single out any institution. I think. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the master plan is, has already identified that. And that's one of the projects that would be up for the upper money too. So. Right. And I, I think, but we can also, I think this, this conversation will crystallize it, of course, but if they see that we're not backing down from the sidewalks, that may be a different avenue and purpose um, for them to pursue versus I think history tells us they go after the fire capital items more often, at least, at least in recent, the recent years that we saw last year, especially at town meeting. I thought the UTV would be popular on their list. So we would be running trucks across their fields. <laughs> well, look, if that comes off the list, then that just frees up 40K for the select board. But we have to assume we're getting zero and then trust that they're going to reallocate anything they find from that to capital unless they're taking a different approach, which I don't know um, until we know. All I've asked is that I not stand up there at town meeting and make amendments this year related to um, contributions or gifts, et cetera. Is there any timeline on that pocket park? Do you know past what's on, on in the budget here? I know they have the committee, they formed the committee, but it, did the select board actually put any sort of framework for timing on that? Mark? Yeah, I get all the fun questions. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> so um, the committee is, has been, been trying to finalize their work. Um, I think they're closer to the end than the beginning. Um, and hopefully they're going to have some um, preferred design for the park um, in place, hopefully sometime in the next on uh, the next month. Um, I have a question just because I don't know. Um, free cash being which which source of funds is free cash? Free cash is the is the funds at the end of the year that exceed your exceed your expenditures that the Department of Revenue then certifies for uh, for expenditure, but you got to appropriate it first. Um, and we um, normally get about one point three. This year we ended up with 1.9 because there was some one-time things that got added into it. Um, and at this point, given the um, select board's desire to make sure we keep the tax rate as low as possible, along with the um, residential tax shift, which is you know adding another you know two two and a half percent on top of everything, um, we're putting it all into the into the budget. Do, so do we do we know if that if that pocket park cost also includes the repair of that intersection right there at all? So the um, the project for that whole intersection with St. Mark Street 85, that's all um, that's included inside of an existing um, uh, public works contract. And the pocket park has been separated out of that contract. OK, thank you. Okay. Um, so to, summar to summarize, our main changes are around adding 100,000 um, back in for sidewalks with a source of general fund, replacing the operation supervisor vehicle with the pickup truck, not to exceed 50,000, split 30% to the water fund, 70% to ARPA or general fund move the fire PPE from general fund to ambulance fund, move the UTV up from ambulance fund to ARPA, remove the defibrillator paramedic for fall town meeting consideration, remove the fire truck tower 21, 100,000 to um, fall town meeting consideration and to also update the operation supervisor vehicle um, amount for the pickup fund, uh, for the pickup using the water fund estimate of 30%. Does anyone think I did not summarize that appropriately other than at the end? I don't think I, did the fire PPE, did you say move that to the ambulance? I thought I did, but it certainly was my intent if I didn't okay. say it. Okay. Is everyone comfortable with that? Okay. Um, then I will move that um, capitals um, support the recommendation that was just outlined. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Hark? Aye. Palmer? Aye. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski is I. Um, thank you. Um, first, Brian, Mark, um, kudos for going through this. I know it's not been an easy couple of weeks. And um, thank you to the committee for rehashing a few of this again. But um, I think we're helping and um, moving some good things forward. All right. Um, public comment. Seeing none. Um, any other business anyone wants to conduct? No, except I would like to um, apologize for my remarks about where ARPA sidewalk money may go because that is undetermined and that would be determined by a select board in the community. All right. Um, okay. Then I don't have a meeting scheduled yet um, moving forward. Let's see where we land headed to town meeting. And if this all crystallizes tomorrow, we can start working on, I'll call it, longer term projects and um, go from there. So I'll be in touch about meeting schedule. Um, so with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote. Park? Aye. 
Palmer? Aye. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski's aye. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you.